Okay, Lady Ada beaming you in. So here's what we're doing, everybody. Um, ChatGPT, latest version for, um, we're using the August 3rd version. We have a whatever pro account. Um, Lady Ada is telling ChatGPT, hello, I'm Lady Ada, and we're going to write a library, Arduino library, in the same style as, guess who? Me. Um, what we found is a lot, if not pretty much all of the microcontroller code out there that ChatGPT was trained on happens to be from Adafruit, one of the benefits of thousands of open source repositories. So, um, you know, there's a polarizing debate about should people even use these tools or is it going to take over the world? Is it going to enslave humans? All this stuff. Um, however, uh, it seems like we're using it in an interesting way because it's using our own code. So Lady Ada is going to do a demonstration of using her own uh, code finding a PDF, doing all sorts of stuff to make an Arduino library. And for the folks that are super pros out there, and I know there's a lot, tell us how we can make this even better. We're using a plugin for a PDF. There's ways to go on the web. This is like my things. third day with this, yeah. you know, it's, just, and, it's very new. And one of the things that we're trying to do is figure out when we do a, um, we do MIT license for everything. We're trying to figure out how do you, how do you credit? Hey, I, I, I co-piloted this with, with ChatGPT, but it was using my code on things, writing in my style. There's another feature of ChatGPT where it, it's it's a preference and you can say, hey, I'm Lady Ada, I'm the CEO of Adafruit. This is my directive. We're not gonna do that this this video. Yeah. Um, so without further ado, as they say, Lady Ada, why don't you write a library using a robot for now? Okay, so uh, as an intro, you know, one of the things that I do a lot, and maybe I'll go to GitHub and show is, we have, um, a lot of repositories full of Arduino libraries. Like we have 1.8K repositories. We have about like 500 or so Arduino libraries and CircuitPython libraries as well that we've written for all sorts of chips, um, every kind of sensor, accelerometer, OLED, display, whatever. We write drivers to support them because um, that's like the tough part of getting something up and running. You just want to like wire up or plug in I squared C or SPI and like get the data out. You don't actually care about how the list 3DH does what it does. You just want to know what the X, Y, and Z acceleration is. Um, and that's like what like me as the engineer at Adafruit like kind of does the most is craft these drivers and examples so that people can get started immediately. And then I sell the hardware uh, to help fund all of the development that we do. Um, and so one of the things that I'm always on the lookout for is new fun chips. And for the last couple of years, there's been a bit of a chip shortage. So not a lot of new chips were coming out. A lot of my time was spent doing redesigns. I did like over 400 redesigns. But now I'm kind of getting back to like, oh, you know, like chips are available again. Even ones that were released before 2021, you can now get them again. Like it used like for a year there, it was like you couldn't even get diodes, right? But now everything's available again. So let's make these breakouts and get these sensors back into the shop. And designing the hardware for a sensor is actually not that hard. I'll be honest, like for me, it's like, I don't want to be like a humble brain. I'm not. It's just usually like you just follow the data sheet and you connect up the power and you connect up the I squared C. And as long as you get the footprint right and you add a couple capacitors and resistors here and there, almost every sensor I work with has the same kind of hookup. It almost always uses I squared C, three volt power, and maybe a level shifter. So there's a lot of like copying and pasting with the schematic and uh, the board layout. That usually only takes me a few hours. But what does take a really long time is writing the Arduino driver. Um, so Arduino drivers, so like, let's look at the VCNL 4010. Um, this is a driver that has Arduino and uh, CircuitPython support for it. And in the driver, you know, you have to set up all the registers and document them. And then there's always these enumerate, like, enumerations for all of the different settings you can set and you want to have them pretty printed um i like to have the you know the enumeration be like visible so you can see like what it is that you're setting instead of just like two and like somehow you would know that that is the same as 7.8 measures per second um there's all these like sub register commands you have to have the setters and the getters and uh i have a certain style that i use 
sorry, called Bus.io. And this comes from CircuitPython, where we use um, a library that does the I2 scene SPI interfacing with registers, basically to avoid the error prone masking and bit setting that is historically used in, you know, like a lot of Linux kernel drivers, honestly, is where I've seen it a lot, where you actually read them the whole eight or 16 bit value and then you try to like bit mask off the bits and rewrite them so that you um, only touch the bits that are relevant. Very error prone, very easy to like make mistakes and like, you know, you're trying to do hex in your head. So what I tend to use is, um, this one, sorry, this is a not one that uses I squared C registers. This is a very old library. Let me find one that does I squared C register bits. Okay, so the INA, this is a good one. So what I tend to do is uh, this is a different uh, sensor that does current and voltage sensing. So I'll have these getters and setters, and what I do is I'll create a register. So let me see if there's Okay, for example, this, whoa, this bus voltage. I'll create the register and I give it the I squared C device. I tell it the register name, which is, is pound defined in the header, how wide the register is. This one is 16 bits, two bytes. Is it MSB first or LSB first? And then I can read from that register object and that will do the I squared C transactions. And then if I need to go into the bits, I can use one of those registers and um, reach in and say, I only want to touch the three bits starting with offset zero. So this is a three bit wide um, sub register address, and it will do all that masking for me. Is it faster than doing bitwise? No, it's much slower because I have all these levels of indirect computation, but it's a lot easier to read and um, so far has been much, much more maintainable. And when we do make mistakes, it's easy to catch them, which is important for the ChatGPT part coming up next because ChatGPT likes to hallucinate. And, it's, and I'm not sure if it will hallucinate when I'm, I do this driver because I'm doing it live. But in past ones, it's made mistakes about bits and shifting. You have to watch what it's doing. But by using this style, this like Adafruit Lady Ada Bus IO style, um, I've been able to catch mistakes a lot faster. And then once I correct them, usually it doesn't make a mistake again. So I'm just letting you know, like I'm setting up, like, how am I going to write this? I'm going to be using this existing style. And here's the good news. For the last, like, five, six years, I've written hundreds of libraries in this style. And so ChatGPT4 has been trained on it. And so I don't have to, like, teach it this new model. It's already learned from GitHub and it can follow along uh, to make a new library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new library for this chip, the VCNL4020. I already made the breakout board for it, and I've been kind of like dragging my feet about making the driver because, again, it's like it can take many, many hours. It's very tedious. And not only is it tedious, but you have to be very careful. There's a lot of like delicate, like don't met, you know, if you make one mistake early with a register, hex value you don't catch it till later and you are like so sad because you're like i've been spending all this time figuring out why it's not working you weren't even addressing the right um register value so one thing that mr lady ada pointed out to me was that there's this plug in um called ai pdf and you can see it right here it's in it's in like the shop it's like a free plug in i am using chat gpt4 i will say that i have used 3.5 and 3 and it did not do nearly as good of a job with this kind of work. Could you get it working with 3.5? Probably. Uh, but for me, it's absolutely worth paying the 20 bucks. So you may not need to, but uh, you know, here you go. So the first thing you're going to do is, uh, you know, you find the chip you want. Uh, I get my chips from DigiKey, but of course, anywhere else. And there's a data sheet. You click on the data sheet. Um, and here's the neat thing. I'm going to have ChatGPT read in the data sheet, and then I'm going to use it. Cause I actually tried earlier to see like, oh, can ChatGPT extract the data and make a table for me? And that didn't work out. But what did work out is having it um, reference the PDF while I'm asking it to write the driver. So um, we'll do this live, but we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna make a new chat and I'm just gonna copy and paste the first prompt. Cause I did, I did work on this last night, but I'm gonna kind of like remake it. So uh, the first thing you do is like, you know, one fun trick is you can tell it who you are, like who you want it to pretend to be. So I want it to pretend to be me. Uh, and I'm going to make a Arduino library. I'm going to eventually try this out with CircuitPython too and see if that works. And then here's the PDF. 
And here's a typo. So I'm going to fix that. And another thing that I'll note is, you know, ChatGPT 4 is a little bit slow. And one more thing is it is limited. There's only 50 messages per three hours. So, you know, um, bunch up your requests as much as possible. Uh, and don't, you know, I, when I first wrote a driver, I gave it all this positive reinforcement. I was like, good job making me this function. And that like wasted a message, uh, you know, give it positive reinforcement and then immediately say, okay, here's the, the next thing I want you to do. Okay. So this uses the plugin to read in the PDF and it got all the text in. Okay. So, you know, it's kind of reading all this stuff. Okay, good. So now uh, we are going to start writing the Arduino library in Adafruit style. Please um, make the header file skeleton to start. We are going to call it Adafruit VCNL 4020. So another thing is, is that you do need to like tell it what you want. And one, one technique that I've learned is that you you do guide it like you pretend like it's an intern <laughs> for like lack of a better phrase where you're kind of you know um gradually telling it um you know here's um how i want you to write it and like um what i want to call things in the function prototypes so one thing that's interesting is that when i did this yesterday Oh, sorry. No, this. Yeah. When I did this yesterday, it actually didn't have the func register definitions because like, then I added them. So it's a big, a little bit smarter than usual. But one other thing to notice is that it kind of hallucinated some of these things. Like I haven't asked it to write these functions and also these functions aren't quite correct, but it's probably looking at other similar drivers that I've written. And this is a very common, you know, I often say like set proximity rate from like the VCNL 4010. So it's probably kind of grabbing that stuff. Still, this is a good place to start um yes uh, actually no let's let me look at this library so okay so now we're going to ready to to write some code finally so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to write a very simple function i happen to have written read this already i want to actually do the product id register because that's a kind of a really good one to start with a lot of modern i squared c sensors have a register you can read that will tell you that you're talking to the thing you think you're talking to so I'm going to say, hey, I want you to make um, a getter for this register. And I'm going to copy and paste it from the PDF so it knows what I'm referencing. Uh, let's write the first function. I can't spell function. uint 8t get prod id. What's it called again? Prod id rev. This will use Adafruit bus IO to create an I squared C register to read register one product ID revision ID. And then actually, you know, it didn't make the full register definition. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna put this in the put this in the parking lot. Let's start by having it make the register definitions. No, first we need to make the register definitions. Um, starting with register, starting with and ending at, let's see, what's the last register? Sometimes they have a big table. No, they don't have a big table. So I'll scroll down and the last register is called adjustment timing. Use pound defines to set the hex value and also put in doxygen comments. Um, this is another thing that I like have learned as I do this is usually when I write code, I do, I write all the code, I get it working, and then I add the doxygen later. But with ChatGPT, I just tell it, hey, do the doxygen comments as you go. So um, it goes through. And one thing that I thought was actually kind of interesting and smart is it recognized that, let me close this. This is register number 15, but the register address is 85 hex, which is like, you know, I. I could see how in a beginner would get that confused. You think, oh, it's address 15, because it's register 15. Nah, no, it's not. 
Okay, so good. It did all of these registers for me. Love it. So one thing I'll also mention um, as I do this is as it does little chunks for you, you'll want to copy and paste those into your like working VS Code file because it can't output the whole file for you. It'll just output little chunks, but then you can just like you stitch them together at the end. Okay, great. Now we will start writing the library. And then here's our command. So we're going to do the first function. And again, this function is very simple because it's just going to read the eight bits and return it. And then in our setup, we're going to um, qu query it and just verify that it, it is the default value, which is, I think, hex 21. Yeah, so that the value is, it's actually hard coded. It's read only. So I don't need a, a setter. I'll need a getter. And then my code later, I'll make it check that it's 21. Okay. So this is how it did it, but that's not the style I want. I want it in this style. Okay. Uh, begin. Okay. So did the big begin function. Um, nope. I prefer that we define the bus IO register within the function, not in setup. The thing is, it's very wordy. It kind of likes to be like, hi, like, I would like to tell you about my feelings. <laughs> okay, so here you go. Much better. Okay, but uh, we can simplify it. Just return the read directly. And let's see. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're right. You just return the value directly. I mean, not that the code before was wrong, but it's like, I like to make it nice and compact. And another thing I notice is um, you can leave off the, as that is the default value for the object prototype. You can simplify the code. You know, why go through and uh, have it tweak the first function, the simple function, because it remembers this context. And then later you'll you'll see it, it leaves unnecessary stuff off and it like does this compact style. Okay, so this is really good. So I'm not doing it right now, but normally I would copy and paste this again into my little C holder um, file because I'm gonna go through all the different registers um, and it's not, it doesn't, it won't concatenate it for me. It only gives me one function at a time. Okay, so we've done that. So next step, we're, we're actually going to skip the command register because it's like really detailed because I want to kind of get through this. And, you know, I don't want to do it all of it together. I want to do each kind. Uh, so I'm going to say next, we're going to do this register. Next, we will, and this is read, write. So we're going to do setter and getter. We will write the setter and getter for proximity register two. Begin by making an enum table for the possible proximity rate values uh, they are three bit binary values. Okay. You know, every time I, I say this, I say it slightly differently, so I'm gonna see like if it can understand uh, my uh, instructions. So this is actually kind of where, this is kind of where I was like, ooh, this is really nice. So normally I would have had to go through and like had created this enumeration table, but it does it for me. I will say, check it, you know, make sure starts at 1.95 and then ends at 250. I'm gonna say, okay, I want this to be a little bit different. Uh, uh, please rename the enums to be like prox rate 195 SPS or MPS. So if I want a different style, instead of having to go in and like hand edit it, um, 
it'll make those changes for me. And notice the very nice um, Doxygen comments. Mwah, love it, All right? Okay, so um, you would put that type def enum. Oh, you know what, I wanna change this. I wanna call this, uh, please call it, I want it to be, I like to have unique um, enum names. So VCNL, NL4020, Prox, call, I'll say the enum. I'll just change the type def for me. This would be like trivial for me to fix, but I, if you tell it to do it, instead of editing it on your own, it will then reference the enum name properly when it creates the setters and getters. Okay, cool. Now this is the way I like it. Let me see, it just finishes and it's like, great, now the proximity rate. So it, it's, it's updated the enum name. Yes, now let's do it. Please write void set proximity let's see box rate and then i like to i like to give it the prototypes and get box rate and we'll see whether it can do it so this is a challenge because this is a multi-bit uh entry within the register um it always gives me these like the it also gives you the um function prototypes so don't forget to save those also okay so notice well technically this is correct it's actually like not really correct so i'm gonna tell it um please check the data sheet so we can make the uh adafruit i uh bus io register bits function to address only the proximity rate bits uh, for the register documentation. All right, so this is the, this we'll see if this can do it. So it's gonna check the AI, uh, use AI PDF. What I wanted to recognize is that the proximity rate is only the lowest three bits. While again, if you wrote these, they're not available, there's probably nothing bad will happen because uh, they happen to be the bottom three bits. Uh, I would like this to be uh, correctly styled. So, okay, cool. It's like, hey, I noticed that it's bits zero through two. So I'm going to use register bits instead. Ooh, not quite. You, interesting, starting to make, starting to make different mistakes. Uh, please make the bus IO register object first then you can use the register bits object to address specific bits inside i'll have the correct function name My favorite things, it's like, certainly, like, oh, yes, obviously, that is the correct thing. It will always um, be very positive. Okay, this time, um, it did do the right thing. So it created the register, and it, again, it's like, you do have to do this once, but once you set the context, future registers, it, it like, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right, I remember how you do this. But you do have to set that context. So it, um, let me see, register bits. Let me make sure that the, it might not know the prototype for this. So I'm gonna go to bus IO and then I'm going to tell it, one thing I might do eventually is figure out how to tell it the, um, the register prototype. So this is, This is the prototype for BSIO register. And this is the prototype for, uh, let's see, register bits. Because it got it, one interesting thing is it swapped here, it swapped bits and offset. It didn't know which one was, was which bits register. Oops. 
register its object. Well, let me see if it's smart enough to realize that it got them swapped. I think in previous chats, I actually told it like what to do. Okay, so this time it, got, it did it right. It was like, oh, you told me the prototype. It's the number of bits and then the shift afterwards. Huh. Okay, so uh, this is correct. And then this is correct as well. It did do the casting. Um, good. This one is correct. Okay, good. So we did do that. Um, next up, let's do... Again, I don't want to like do a ton of different things. Let's do the re read result register. Um, let's skip over to... This is a two byte register MSB. Please write UN16T get ALS void. Getter. So this one's going to be interesting because it doesn't have bits that it has to look into. But it does have to um, recognize that the register is two bytes wide. It's not a single byte. So given that we um, earlier gave it the um, function prototypes, it should recognize that it has to do yeah two MSB first. And uh, let's check to do the high. Yeah, it reads the high byte first. So that's the address going in and note that it remembers that it made that table before so it gives you like all the right register names um nice but you can just return the value directly <coughs> next i'll have to do the proximity result register and then i think that's it i mean what do you think mr Leviata? We'll wrap it up yeah wrap it up this okay. is a little bit like a cooking show so do you want to like show the uh thing out of the oven like well i didn't finish the full that full driver but i'll show the um the chat that i did before okay uh, so let me do one last thing okay yeah. and then while you're wrapping up here for the experts and all this you know experts this has been around like for a month uh for for uh everyone who's really good at this you know let us know what other things that make sense to do, but be a little specific. Like if there's a plugin to try, great. If there's a demand for uh, doing things a little bit different, we know about the uh, preferences that you can put, like, hi, I'm Lady Ada from the start, so you don't have to introduce yourself. But, um, you know, a lot of this is new and uh, there's a lot of um, hype, but then there's a lot of practical things. We're probably using it in a very different way. I haven't seen anyone do anything like this, but if someone is, let us know as well. Um, I also know there's developers that are just like, well, I'm using these tools, but I don't want to tell anybody. That's fine. Um, we're going to always disclose when we use these. And uh, I'll probably drop a note to OSI, I guess, or like Oshawa, I don't know, and say, hey, like, what does it look like when we credit? To write um, Doxygen header comments and give me the completed functions back all right so finally let's say we did all this thing and then i realized like oh shoot i forgot to do the um the oxygen comments because again i always forget to do that till the end um but you know i have the ci that tells me i have to do doxygen so i'm like not gonna forget forget um so you know i i go through and i do it um it does set, seem like oh you know you're like you're kind of telling it detail detail like what you know is this really worth it the thing is is that i wrote a longer library um, before and it does catch on like you have to kind of tease it through the first one um, and another thing is is that I'm starting a new chat I think that if I had like one long chat called like I'm going to teach you how to do Arduino libraries it would remember more of the context of like it wouldn't be like oh I need the prototype for that function again or like how do I address the bits and is it shifted first or width first once you teach it it learns it so you know I, I started with like a fresh chat, which I think does kind of give it a clean context. Um, you might be better having like one long context where you kind of teach it step by step. So um, the next thing is, you know, it, I'm like, okay, give me every function with the doxygen. So one thing about, I'll say about the doxygen commenting is 
it's always technically correct, but it's very like uncreative and it doesn't like understand exactly what the data is like means and is good for. So it's not smart in that way. It will, you know, one of the things that I do like is at least gives me like the, you know, at brief and it does the dots and it gives, you know, everything's nice and pretty and ready to go. Very copiloty and it does fill in some of the basics, but you you will have to go through and make sure does the um output give you like what you is is the output like technically correct because I have seen um, like you saw like bit swaps and like wrong addresses and I'll just go through uh, you know quickly I did this and many more um, functions and maybe you know I'll I'll give Mr. Lady Ada like the um, the output from this you know I start to get to more advanced things so like okay for this one this was an interesting it got very confused about the bit width of a setter um, and this was I didn't use an enum I was like okay I want you to take the input value LEDMA and I want to divide it before you assign it. And it, um, you know, created the headers for me. And then it's like, it's a five, it's a seven bit LED current field. And I think it thought that because before you divide by 10, it probably would fit into seven bits. But I was like, no, nope, it's check the bit width and it would do the AI field. And it was like, no, it's seven bits. It was like totally convinced. Eventually I just had to say, look, it's six bits wide. And it was like, Oh yeah, right. And then, you know, it fixed this uh bit with um argument to the function. So, it will it will it will hallucinate. It will continuously tell you like this is this, this. It will not it doesn't teach you everything about writing drivers, but like one of the things that I really liked about this just like wrapping up is I'm writing drivers now like very very tired cuz I'm like taking care of a baby all day and like doing all the work I have to do. And then it's like, okay, now write a driver. And it's like, you know, midnight and I'm really tired. And it's like, I don't have the energy to like relearn all that context. Like, where was I, what was I doing? With ChatGPT, I can use like my higher functions, but I'm not sitting there like copying and pasting and making like typos. It's easier for me to copy edit and make sure that the output is correct. And for me to write it by hand where like, I'm hallucinating at like one in the morning. Um, but so far, you know, I've written, you know, basically wrote this driver and, uh, you know, once, once it got the hang of it, again, once I told it, like, here's how you write a register setter and getter, it actually just kind of like started popping them out pretty nicely. Um, you know, ready to go with all the, you know, the docs are doing ready already. And it would tell me, it would, uh, tell me the bits, the documentation to remind me it's one bit at position three. And so if I made a mistake, I could easily, um, look it up in the documentation. Um, but you know, it's trained on like all of my like, libraries. And what's interesting is like, it's clearly like my style of code, like the way the register is set up and then the way I address the bits and read and write from them. It's like, it was, it's very nice to see, like it's a little mini me. So, um, you know, yeah, it was like, it would start doing the enums for me and, uh, it, you know, got my style that I like to type def. It's like, oh, you like the underscore, you know, lowercase underscore and name and then i could you know do some swaps so um this was a really interesting and like makes makes it much much easier to do the very frustrating work of transcribing a data sheet into a driver so um this is my first experimentation again like i only like signed up like three days ago and i've been you know like my first experiment was just like okay i want to like turn a list into hold on Oh my God, I can't scroll up to the very top. So I scroll, bar. oh, there's a scroll bar. Okay. You know, the first thing I was just doing is trying to do that um, TFT in it. And then this conversion where I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to copy and paste from the data sheet. And this was using uh, GPT 3.5 and it could do that. But then like realizing I could use um, the PDF was, was Mr. Lady Ada's uh, brilliant insight. Anyway, so that's me uh, trying out ChatGPT for writing. Arduino C libraries using the data sheet, uh, PDF data sheet as a reference. So far, so good. Um, I, you know, I think this could be a really great tool for driver writers. You still need to think a little bit. You need to have some human touch, um, but a lot of the heavy lifting is done for you, which is quite nice. Okay, if you stay with this long, please put things up in the comments. Be specific about ways we can make this better. If there's people out there doing stuff like this, let us know if there's plugins we should check out. Um, we're also going to do an update. Uh, we'll post this code somewhere. Maybe I'll do a blog post. Yeah. Uh, and Lady Ada can uh, toss me the Python code. 
uh sorry the um arduino code yeah um and then we'll we'll try pythons yeah maybe next weekend yeah okay all right bye everybody later Thank you.